How are we doing, friends? And welcome back to Continues to Tick. Here we are once again with another monthly dividend portfolio review. And as you see this, it'll either be the very last day of September or the very beginning now of October. And then now we just have October, November, December, and that is it. That is it for this year. And I hope as the year winds down, you can start to look back and say, I either accomplished what I needed to, I began what I had planned for the year, or you can realize, admit to yourself, I didn't do as much as I had hoped for, for this year of 2024. But just know, even if you haven't started, you know, don't throw it all away, right? If you had this plan at the beginning of the year and you haven't executed, you haven't met the goal, you still got three full months to operate. A lot of people wait for the beginning of the year to begin these New Year's resolutions. Don't wait. Life doesn't wait. Time doesn't wait. If there's something that you're absolutely just waiting for the new year to begin, don't do that. Begin literally now. And with that said, friends, if this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, you know, we're, we're just continuing this journey. The journey doesn't stop. I do got some big updates for the portfolio. That's going to be the topic for today's video, which I'll show you here as we run down this track. But if it's your first time here, just know this is what we cover here. In this big monthly portfolio review, I tell you how much I fund my portfolio and how often. I'll dive into my sector allocations and percentages. And with that, I'll touch on the best and worst performers that I have for my sectors and as a sector as a whole, the number of current holdings in my portfolio, the current dividend portfolio's yield, my expense ratio, some of my short and long-term plans for the portfolio. I always do this monthly. It just provides a good opportunity to just reflect on how I'm progressing, where I'm trying to go with my portfolio. And I encourage you guys to do the same, but I do it here on my video. And at the very end of this segment of my portfolio review, I'll, I'll tell you how much my dividend portfolio currently pays me in dividends. And we're continuing to make progress on that front. That's honestly the most exciting part. And like I said, I do have a topic for today's video. Today, it's gonna be the hardest portfolio adjustment to date. Yes, I've had to make an adjustment. I'm gonna tell you which one I've made and why it was the hardest one. So here we are, friends, in the Jesse's Cashflow Portfolio. I've always wanted to rename it, never have. It's been over four years now. And that's the thing. It's been over four years that I've had this dividend portfolio. I actually began this portfolio about a solid year into my workforce and right after the pandemic. But that was when I started this portfolio and I haven't looked back. What you're going to see here is a result of beginning from that time. But here we are, friends. We're at $96,603.77. So we're continuing to chip along, inching closer and closer to the 100K mark. You know, 100K will be a nice number to reach, and we're going to reach it organically when we do. And then as we take a look here at the chart, you can see we began technically on July 19th. I think I did my first funding into this portfolio on July 20th. But ever since then, you know, we've just been steadily climbing. And that's how this economy has continued to move despite what it feels like. That's why from time to time, I feel like it's on every single video nowadays, I say this whole thing is a game, right? You're either playing the game and giving yourself an opportunity to, you know, gain something, right? Win something. Or you're just standing on the sidelines, not investing, just being, you know, a victim of this capitalistic society. You know, you, all you do is spend, spend, spend. You're not investing anything and making anything back, right? This whole thing is a game, at least in my opinion. It's a capitalistic system, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And hopefully a lot of you guys are playing it or you're trying to figure out ways to play. This whole thing is a game. And since we're here on the chart, friends, one thing I do like to show is just my holdings here. So my percentage unrealized gain is 34.95% for the portfolio, which equates to $25,000. So breaking it down, my cost basis is $71,585. And the value, as you've seen, 96K. And here's a little sneak peek into the number of holdings that I have. And it is indeed 50. So if you're curious, friends, and you want to just take a look, because I know it's helpful, right, to compare portfolios or get an idea of what it is that people are holding. There's a link in my description box. It's from M1. You can click on that. You'll be able to see this pie. 
you know, go at your own pace. There's no rush to it. And you can see everything that it is that I'm holding that's completely free. I don't gain anything from you guys going on there. But I leave the link there just because I know when I very first started this journey, I didn't really know what was out there. So I looked at people's portfolios from the people that were willing to share it right on YouTube. And I just, you know, got some ideas. So if it's helpful for you guys, the link is right there. And apart from that, let's adjust this here. So this is an order from the biggest sector to the smallest. So I have real estate set at 13% of my portfolio. Consumer staple set at 12%. My ETF, if, and I'll click on it here for you. It's SPYD set at 10%. My index fund also at 10%. And I'll click on this so I can show you. It's VIG. And then I have tech at 10%. Utilities at 10%. Financials at nine, industrials at eight, healthcare, which looks like it's my only red sector at 7%, communications at five, energy at 3%, materials at 2%, consumer discretionary 1% of my portfolio. Hey, what is that? I'll show you. <laughs> it's McDonald's. It's the only one I have in here. I mean, it's just McDonald's. I mean, they're everywhere. They can't go wrong, right? So yeah, of course I have them in my dividend portfolio. I like some chicken McNuggets every once in a while too. And if you look here closely, friends, you can see, yes, I have real estate, for example, set at 13%. That is my target. So all the ones I mentioned are my target. The one above it are my actual. So I, I haven't rebalanced my portfolio. I'm letting it run the way it's running. But I did at the very beginning set target allocations. And every blue moon, I do adjust the target allocations themselves. You know, but overall, I haven't rebalanced my portfolio. So it's overweight in some ways, underweight in others and i'm just letting it ride so one thing to keep in mind and as far as my best performer i'll show you guys as a sector it's tech at 401 percent and we'll click on it i'll show you it continues to be nvidia and this is where it is very overweight but nvidia was one of those companies that you know i bought from the very beginning you know my cost average is very low grew very high so i have a lot of unrealized gain of nvidia and I'd probably even have more. I think I actually paid it off and I took out my gain already from that holding because I took a chunk out last year to go to Greece, right? To fund my trip to Greece. So I think I went to Greece for the cost of my Nvidia shares. And now the rest is, as they say, house money. And you know, honestly, that's really cool. So I hope you guys get to experience things like that. And that's just for the moment, right? I don't get lost in the moment too much. It's doing great right now, but you know, in 10 years, five years, 20 years, I mean, you know, we'll see. I'm making the decision to let it ride and whatever happens from it, we'll live with it. But I don't really pay too much attention to it other than that, you know, it's just fun to see. And as far as the one after NVIDIA, right? My second best winner here is Oracle, right? Which is interesting you wouldn't think so maybe people would think it's apple you know or maybe visa but no it's actually oracle ibm is after that and then apple so some of these more you know mature tech companies are actually the ones leading the way in my tech sector so you know that's my best sector at 401 percent everything else is in the green i'm not going to touch on it mention it but i will mention that you know my least or my worst performer, I should say, uh, which isn't by much. It's my whole healthcare sector. It's down 3.76%. But Johnson & Johnson is leading the way at 14.93%. And Medtronic and Pfizer are in the red. Pfizer is really, you know, 20%. It's noticeable at this point, but we'll let it ride. We'll let it keep going for now. But that's it, friends, for the best and worst performers as a sector. Let's go back to holdings here. And I want to show you my best performer as a holding. Of course, it's going to be NVIDIA with the 809% gain, followed by ExxonMobil, 137, Oracle, 133, Aflac, 122, and the rest are sub 100% gains. So I won't go into those. And as far as my worst performers, let's take a look. We have a handful, two handfuls. We have UGI, minus 22%. It's on my radar. Pfizer, like I said, is also on my radar, minus 18%. But for now, I'm letting it go. I think their dividends are, you know, paying their way through, keeping them in my portfolio for now. And then Medtronic, minus 9%. Comcast, minus nearly 8%. Verizon, nearly minus 7%. 
Sunoco minus 5.9%, and then American Water Works practically flatlined, just slightly in the red. And now getting into a little bit more of the data of my portfolio itself. Um, this is from you know 2023 to 2024. None of, the, none of this up here matters. What I'm trying to show you here is just the actual data statistic. So my holdings, I do hold 50 as you saw. My expense ratio is 0.01%, and then my dividend yield is 2.882%. So as far as my dividend yield goes, you know, 2.8, somewhere between 2.8 and 3.4, 3.3, that is like my comfort zone. Um, you know, I was, at some point my dividend yield was higher, I will say that, and it was because I was holding Walgreens in a decent amount. However, I sold that and then redistributed that back into my portfolio. I was just realizing with that specific holding, which is what a lot of people get stuck in sometimes, is this idea of chasing yield. So the next portion here, I want to tell you about my short and long term plans for the portfolio. My short term plans, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be the topic for today's video. I had to put a pause on my funding schedule. So that's why I also haven't mentioned how much I fund my portfolio. At this moment, the last two weeks, it's actually been zero. And this is the very first time I've ever done this in my portfolio. I've always had something go in and I'll explain why, why I did this. My short term plan right now is to maybe pause my funding for about four weeks. I've already done two weeks. I'm looking to do another two and then I'll kind of reevaluate my positions where I'm at and everything. And then I'll see if I need to pause it more. Um, I'm really just kind of cleaning out my house in terms of that, just my finances. And I need to really recalibrate what it is that I'm doing so I don't get myself in trouble. So that's why I put a pause. And I also put a pause because, you know, my un unrealized gain has been growing so fast that, you know, I felt comfortable enough to do this. But at the same time, it was quite painful because it was the very first time. But I'd rather make an adjustment and a pivot now than find myself in a pickle in a situation where, oh man, I got to sell my portfolio to finance stuff. So... I'll explain here in a minute. And apart from that short-term goal, friends, I did recently switch jobs this year for one that for me is gonna be better for my long-term future. I did take a pay cut, which again, is gonna be a topic for this video today. But my, my short-term plan, which is about the next two to three years, I plan to continue to position myself and my career to get the experience that I'm currently getting, which I need to then flip that for you know a pay raise in about three years. That's the plan. Now, in terms of my long-term plan, I still plan to retire at the age of 50 or 52, whichever one is required for my pension, right? And that is going to be the very last year that I will ever work in my career for this workforce, right? For this capitalistic machine. It's going to be at 50 to 52. And that's my long-term vision. I hope to have a pension. I hope to have a dividend portfolio that's giving me passive income. And I also hope to have some real estate. I have the pension. I have, I have the pension building up. I have the dividend portfolio building up. I haven't quite gotten into real estate yet. I'm hoping to get into that phase when I get my next job with my good pay. So those are it for my plans. And of course, friends, as we're, as we're working our way through this video, I'm gonna show you guys now my dividend income. So when it comes to my dividend portfolio and its current size of 96.6 thousand, right? My dividend income at the moment as it sits for 2024 is $2,399.75. And I believe this includes the projected amount as well, right? Like some pending income, some estimated income. For 2024, this is what the expectation is, $2,399 and 75 cents and then where it gets a little bit more fun is the next 12 months you know it's a larger projection but that's projected to be two thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and so here we are now friends this is the video topic that i've been waiting to explain you know i did tell you guys i finally for the first time in my portfolio put a pause to my funding schedule that to me was a big deal but it was difficult and i want to be transparent with that process and why i'm doing it with you guys because from the very beginning till now, I've always been so consistent, right, with funding every single week. And that to me has been a key, a key piece to actually getting to this size of a dividend portfolio with my pay, uh, with my lifestyle, with my dreams, with my goals. And this is the first time I had to change it. So I'll start by going into number one, friends. The biggest reason why, you know, this had to happen was the first domino that fell when I took a $24,000 pay cut. You know, from going from my job in the state prison, working as an RN in person, to now working from home, still for the state government. You know, very flexible job. I really enjoy this job. It was a job promotion to being a nurse consultant 
as opposed to being a floor nurse. But this one, it's very entry level. You know, the title is what I needed, right? Working as a nurse consultant. Um, but, it, but in order to get this job, I had to accept a $24,000 pay cut, which is a lot. It's about $2,000 every single month, right? That's nothing to just ignore. And I was always waiting and waiting because I switched jobs back you know, at the very last day of May, so we could just say June 1st. And I've been waiting a couple months to really feel the impact of this, right? Without really tweaking my lifestyle, but slowly I had to make tweaks, right? Month by month, I was making slight adjustments, eating out a little less here, not buying, you know, everything I need right away, waiting a little bit more to make a purchase sometimes. Like I was making these adjustments, but the one adjustment I didn't make was my funding schedule, right? I was still funding every single week. I think when I first took the job cut a couple months in anticipation, I, was, I think I was still investing like $200 every single week. So then I dropped it to like 100 every week. So there was a lot of adjustments being made. This next adjustment was actually putting things on pause. You know, this $24,000 pay cut, which is a good thing for my career, right? I will say that, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not upset about the decision to take this job. This job is what I need, but the requirement to take this job it has a big hefty price to pay and i do have to do this job for two to three years so that's a lot of money being left on the table right two years that's 48 three years what is that 82 72 72 thousand so you know that's that's not something to just ignore like that's a lot of money but my idea is right and i'll explain here just in brief this job in three years i can then get another job right that will give me at least about a thirty-four thousand dollar pay bump and then in my future, right, the, the end cap of the job I can get from where, from how much I'm getting paid today is about a $75,000 pay bump. And I, I would still be like very chill, right? Like working from home, working for the state government, being a nurse. So this is why I'm doing this because I know the ultimate payoff is there. I just have to do this. So enough of that first one, right? Hopefully some of that made sense. One area that I noticed kind of bit me a little bit you know, if I can go back in time, I don't know if I'd do it the same way or not. But it has always been my decision to stay fully invested. So I'll be transparent with you guys. I don't have a lot saved. I probably have like about a thousand or so in the bank and I'm fully invested. I think a lot of the real investors, the people who love investing can relate to this, right? People always say, oh, have your emergency fund, have your emergency fund, which I will tell you, don't listen to me and not have an emergency fund. And I will explain to you why I do it this way. The reason why I get away with this and I can sleep at night, I have no worries. I don't have an emergency fund greater than $1,000 at any given time. And $1,000 in today's economy isn't much. If you have to get tires for your car, bam, there goes half, right? If you plan to go on a trip and you got half an Airbnb payment, bam, there goes the other half, right? You got a birthday, you eat out, two birthdays in a month, bam. You know, that's a good chunk, right? $1,000 is not much. But the reason, right, the reason why I get away with this, the reason why I decided at some point in my career to do it this way is only, and I will underline this, only because I work for the state. Because I work for the state, I can maneuver financially in a way that a lot of people can't. My job is so stable. The layoff possibility is so low when you work for the state government. I, I lean on that a lot. I lean on the fact that, oh, next month I'm not just gonna get laid off or you know I'm gonna get laid off out of the blue. That doesn't happen in the state government. Like the chance of that happening is so slim. Like it just doesn't happen, right? Especially if you're like a decent worker, it's almost impossible, right? To get fired with the state when you work for the state government, it's practically impossible. So because of this, I always rely and lean on the fact that every month I'm gonna get a paycheck and I'm never gonna get surprised, right? Don't do what I do, and I know that sounds hypocritical, but don't do what I do unless you work for the state, is just my suggestion. You will always do what you want, but I'm just letting you know why I do it this way. But even though I do it this way, I still kind of got bit a little bit, and it's because I don't have a lot of an emergency fund. Not to say I would touch that to invest it, but maybe if I had, you know, a little bit more money in there, I'd maybe dip into it to continue to invest and fund into my dividend portfolio. But again, if I didn't work for the state, I probably wouldn't touch it at all. I just know that not having, you know, this capital in my bank to continue to fund has been a reason why I had to put a pause. Take that information as you want, but I'm just trying to be transparent with you guys and let you know my situation. And as far as this section here, number three, right? 
the pause. I've, been, I've mentioned it a few times. I've paused my funding for two whole weeks already, which to me is like $200. But those are $200 that I can then use to kind of build up my savings account and kind of get myself out of my kind of tight situation, right? My other alternative to the pause would be selling a chunk of my dividend portfolio, which I really don't want to do. So I had to bite, you know, my ego a bit, right? Because I didn't do this perfectly. And instead of selling a chunk of my dividend portfolio, I'm like, no, 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 that's that's even worse. Let me just put a pause to my ego of saying I funded every single week and funding every week for my portfolio, right? I think the thing that took the biggest hit was just me. It was a humbling experience to put a pause and life is just gonna continue to happen. I'm showing you my journey from the very beginning till now. I'm showing you the good, the bad, the ugly, the amazing. I'm showing it all, right? NVIDIA, great win. And I'm showing you the, the dark times, right? Of the pause and my job pay cut. Like I'm, I wanna show it all to you guys because it's not just all perfect. It really isn't. And I want you guys to know that. This is, this is life happening and, and unfolding for me over the course of time. You're gonna see the larger picture is gonna be at the course of decades right? This is one pause. Maybe when I start up again in the future, I'll have to do another pause. I have no idea. I just always want to be honest and transparent with you guys. So that's it. And so the larger plan, friends, right? This is the thing that keeps me optimistic. It's the reason why I did this in the first place. Like I said, my career runway is only going to get better. It's going to improve in about three years. Well, I got to make it three years, right? This is why I think of the future. I know this $24,000 pay cut is not forever, I could hold on to it. I've had to make adjustments along the way. But right now I make $111,000 for the year as a nurse working from home for the state government. But I want I want a different position. I want more, right? I want to continue to grow in my life and my career. This 111,000 at some point is going to be 144,000 when I get my next job. And then over time, I'll get raises and bumps, bump ups, right? Up to 185, 190,000. But right now, I got to eat it, and it's 111. And just for perspective, when I worked at the state prison, I was making 134. So the larger plan is that. So when I go and get that next job, and I have more capital, I have more free money coming in every month, I'll be able to invest more, hopefully get into real estate, and begin a real estate portfolio, and just live a better quality of life, right? We all work really hard for something. The idea is to not stay the same. The idea is to continually improve our position but sometimes you have to take one step back to take those two steps forward and that is exactly what i'm doing right now it's just happening slowly but this is what it looks like and so that's going to be it friends this is a big monthly dividend portfolio review for september you know this is the journey it's pretty sometimes it's great sometimes and it's ugly other times and it's not so amazing other times but i'm going to show it all to you friends continue to join the journey follow along for the snips and the pieces that you enjoy I'll continue to be here every two weeks, and we're just going to continue, friends. If this is you, you're on this journey, just know you're not alone. There's myself, there's other people like you, as you've seen on YouTube, doing the same thing. And of course, we all have our own story, with our own experience, and it's all worthwhile. I'll see you guys on the next one.